Buenos dias. Welcome to Ecuador. Something came out of the sky. Take the building up spot in and pour it out of the ground. Normally people associate Ecuador with Galapagos Islands or the capital Quito. I'm here to explore the highlands of this country, the area called La Sierra. I'm gonna start all the way up north, make my way down to the city of Cuenca and then move west to the city of Guayaquil. To be honest with you, I'm super stoked and excited about this because this is the area where Andes go through the country and the natural beauty here is supposed to be astonishing. Without further ado, Ecuador, La Sierra, vamo! San Francisco de Quito is the highest constitutional capital in the world. It's sitting at approximately 2,900 meters above the sea level. It is also the first city to be given a status of World Heritage Site by UNESCO. The city is a mix of um, colonial architecture and indigenous art. In addition to that, there are eight volcanoes that surround the city. And as you can imagine, the views are absolutely stunning and incredible here. All of the above definitely makes it a must visit when in Ecuador. My introduction to Quito begins with the largest neo-gothic church in South America, in fact both Americas, a beautiful Basilica del Voto Nacional. The groundbreaking work began in 1892 and it was opened to public in 1924. It was designed by a French architect and it is evident by a slight resemblance to Notre Dame de Paris. Today it is a symbol of Quito and in addition to being an architectural masterpiece it offers a unique opportunity to climb its towers. You'll have to go through somewhat challenging set of steep stairs but trust me, once you make it to the top it will be well worth your efforts. Quito from here looks quite special. But let's move on to the heart of it all, a center of the old town, the famous Plaza Grande. It is Quito's main square and the place where locals come together to hang out under the sun and watch the bustle around it. This square is special for locals in many ways, but the most important reason is that it is a symbol of nation's independence from imperialist Spain. It honors those heroes who started the movement towards free Ecuador, hence its other name, the Independence Square. How important it is for Ecuadorians? Well, if you happen to be here on any given Monday morning, you can see it for yourself. Here in Quito they have a pretty cool tradition. Every Monday at 11 o'clock uh, the president comes on that balcony and uh, addresses um, its people. Uh, this tradition goes back to 19th century. Uh, I think it has to do with the uh, great battle won uh, in 1812 uh, against Spanish colonists. And uh, since then they've been having this tra tradition. Unfortunately I wasn't able to to make it, but if you're in Quito, uh, this is something that you definitely should attend. Quito's old town is recognized as one of the best preserved and least altered historic centers in Latin America. Within close proximity to Plaza Grande, you will find Quito's other popular places. Among them, La Compañía de Jesús, 17th century Jesuit church, Plaza San Francisco with the city's oldest church San Francis and many other attractions. For those who are interested in architecture and history it is easily possible to spend all day exploring the old town. For me personally it wasn't about just some specific building or place. 
I came here to feel the character and the charm of the city. Wandering around historic Quito with its colonial architecture felt like moving back in time. And once you realize that all this beauty has been here for over 500 years, surviving numerous earthquakes and volcanic eruptions, you really start to get that next level of appreciation. Here you can experience a unique Baroque school of Quito that brings together a mix of indigenous and colonial art traditions. I also must say that credits should be given to the local authorities for making great efforts to preserve the historic center and provide an opportunity for people like myself to come here and experience Quito's history firsthand. If you want my advice, and it might sound a bit cliche, but this is the place to turn off your phone and turn off your navigations and get lost in the colorful streets. I assure you, you will find many pleasant surprises. But Quito is not just about colonial buildings or old brick roads, it is well-rounded metropolis that offers something for everyone. An example is La Mariscal and La Floresta neighborhoods that attract younger crowds. And whereas La Mariscal is known for its party scene, La Floresta is more of a hipsterish, quiet area with tons of coffee shops and lots of street art. If you are a fan of street art, you can even hire a private tour here to walk you through the area and explain the history behind it. If you ask me, it's a perfect way to spend the morning. A very popular attraction here is taking a cable car to the slopes of Pichincha Volcano. I mean, it's pretty cool scenic ride and I see why a lot of tourists would put it on top of their to-do list. But once I saw a two-hour wait line, I kissed goodbye the idea and hit the road. But I had sense of some missing puzzle piece. I really wanted to see Quito from the above to experience the whole magnitude of its beauty. So I started looking for a spot and I found it. You've probably seen the famous statue of La Virgen de Quito. Well, it is here on Panecillo Hill where I found a quiet spot to just sit and enjoy the views. And I must tell you, Quito from the top is just breathtaking. There are a few places around Quito that also worth mentioning. One of such places is Museo Templo del Sol, or Museum of the Sun. Located 20 kilometers north of Quito and designed by Quito-born artist Cristobal Ortega, this museum is a perfect place to have a crash course on Andean indigenous culture. Pachacuti was a 15th century Inca ruler who created a large empire along the east coast of South America, including modern Ecuador. Pachacuti was considered an offspring of the God of the Sun. The temple celebrates the history of these Ecuadorian ancestors. If you are lucky, you might even catch a traditional Ecuadorian dance performance. Locals of every age group come together wearing traditional costumes celebrating their history and culture. Personally, I found this visit to be very educational and inspiring. This would help me to understand more of this country as I move on to explore La Sierra. As a bonus, in the same complex you will find Pululahua Reserve, the largest inhabited crater in South America. An eruption of volcano that happened here about two and a half thousand years ago created a very fertile soil and prompted many farmers to move in and build small communities here, which I found quite fascinating. Another famous spot is Mitad del Mundo, which translates to the middle of the world or simply the equator. It is a small town slash museum about 25 kilometers away from Quito. At the center of it stands a 30 meter high monument representing the center of the world. This monument also serves as a museum with a nice viewing platform on top. Mitad del Mundo is an entertainment complex suitable for every age group. Here you can see live concerts, live acting at the main square and many other attractions. My personal favorite was an exhibition called Viviendas Ancestrales, which translates to Ancestral's Homes. Here you can find a traditional representation of Ecuador's regions from Costa, which is a coastal region, to Oriente, which is an Amazon region. You 
BBC in 1735, a team of 20 French and Spanish scientists sailed to Ecuador to determine the true shape of the Earth. They intended to do so by measuring the vast distances between the mountain tops. After 10 years, they were able to complete their measurements and determine the true shape of the Earth. This allowed for the maps to be more accurate and allow for more precise navigation. This was the first time when the equator line was drawn and remained so until the invention of global positioning system, better known to us as GPS. It was then realized that the actual equator was a few yards away, to be exact 250 yards. If you ask me, that's not bad for 18th century measurements. But you see, Quito authorities have already spent money and built Mitad del Mundo, and so they decided to keep it as a touristy attraction. Overall, Mitad del Mundo is a colorful playground offering enough to spend a quality day here and get to know more about Ecuador. Though, it seems at some point that everyone becomes a kid here and the place turns into one big fun house. As I have mentioned before, the true equator is located northeast of Mitad del Mundo. And here, Museo Intindian can be found. If you are looking for less noise, quick crash course with an expert guide, and of course hitting a true equator, this would be a place to visit. Here you will get to know more about indigenous people lifestyle and get introduced to some of their odd customs, to say the least, like a shrinking head custom of Amazonian tribe called Huorani. Sometimes we don't show this because it's gonna be very viral, so we mm -hmm. don't show to the tourists. Okay, he was a guy of 65 years and his reduction was about 170 years ago. He's part of the heritage of this country and we are the guardians of this one. Yes, I agree with you, it is cruel and disturbing. But as Carolina said, who by the way happened to be a great guide, it is part of Ecuador's heritage. But let's move on to the fun stuff. Here you can also find a number of interactive exhibits that only occur at the equator. Here's the test with the water drainage. If you place a sink full of water at the equator and start draining it, it will go straight down. If you move it south, it will go clockwise, and if you move it to the north, it will go counterclockwise. Here you can also try balancing an egg on the nail and get to know how Incas were able to tell time. Overall, very cool experience and interesting place with a nice added bonus to knock off your bucket list. Latitude here, zero. The last place that I would like to mention is Rumicucho Ruins. Located within approximately 10 minute drive from the Mitad del Mundo, it is worth making an effort stopping here. For starters, it is 15th century Incan fortress, situated on the hills for strategic purposes to observe the enemy of the north. If you are lucky with the weather and come here on a clear day, you'll be able to see Cayamba and La Marca mountains. One of the reasons I came here was the views. I wanted to get a bit of a sneak peek of what to expect from La Sierra and its highlands.